Welcome folks, I want to give you a tutorial on how to apply Thevenin theorem in solving electric circuit problems. Thevenin technique is a powerful technique because it simplifies a big network into a simple circuit. For starters, Thevenin theorem looks abstract a bit, but I will present the steps from an, an intuitive perspective. As usual, I did this video to help my students at Washington State University, but I would like to share this video with you through my YouTube channel. In this video, I will show you the intuitive approach to apply the steps, and in subsequent videos, I will show you examples, and finally, I will show you how to simulate those circuits using ORCAD BSPICE. So let's get started. Let's say that you have a network as the one shown here with a load resistance that is connected across its terminals. The network that is represented here can be of any circuit. For example, I can replace the network with this circuit and now I want it to thevenize this particular network or this particular circuit. So what we're going to do here is we're going to remove the load resistance and then the terminals AB become open circuit. So the circuit becomes open circuit by removing the load resistance. Now this network has an, an equivalent circuit to it. It's called the Thevenin equivalent network or the Thevenin equivalent circuit. This big network that basically can be simplified into a voltage source in series with a resistance. The voltage source is called V Thevenin and the resistance is called R Thevenin. So this is extremely important and powerful technique uh, that is used in solving circuit uh, problems. And the reason is if you connect the load across the original network, there will be a current and a voltage across it. To know this current and the voltage across the circuit, if you know Thevenin equivalent is going to be the same if you connect the same resistor across it. So if those two resistors are the same, then you're going to have the same voltage and current through this simple circuit as this complex network or circuit. So clearly that the Thevenin theorem is very powerful technique because we can use it to simplify a big circuit into a simple circuit. So we're going to remove those two resistors from here and then the question becomes how to find V7 and R7. So we need to find both V7 and R7. So the basic idea behind it is that if we remove the load resistance from the terminals A and B, whether it is here or whether it is here is the same thing. So to show you why the step work, why the steps work, we're going to look intuitively at the circuit. So whatever we do in the circuit here is going to be also applied to the circuit. So by making this circuit open circuit at the load, we know that the current going into this open circuit is zero. If the current going into this open circuit is zero, then the current going into this open circuit can also be zero. And my objective here is to find V7. So the way I would find V7 is basically by saying that the voltage V7 going to be the same as the voltage across the load. The reason is that the current is zero, then the voltage across this resistor is zero. By doing KVL, I know that minus V7 plus zero, since the current is zero, plus VOC, the open circuit voltage, is going to be zero by KVL. So when you apply KVL here, basically it says that V7 will equal to VOC because the current is zero. So to apply the same concept to the original circuit, once you remove the load resistance, then just go ahead and measure the voltage VOC across it. The intuitive answer is here, but the way we do it or the way we apply the steps is here. Remove the load resistance, major VOC, it's going to give you V7. 
Why does it work? Because here, if we remove the load resistance, then VOC is the same as V thevenin. Basically, to evaluate V thevenin, remove the load resistance across the load terminals, then evaluate VOC. Or we can say that the thevenin voltage, V thevenin, will equal to VOC. So that's the basic step in how to find V thevenin. Now, uh, we wanted to find R thevenin, and to find R thevenin, there is two methods or approaches that can be used to evaluate R thevenin. Either one is valid. So usually, if you're doing that for your exam or for your lab or as assignment, you only need to use one of those methods. One of the methods will be valid. You don't need to do the two methods, but sometimes there is one method is easier than the other one. So let's look at the first method. The first method is called the short circuit method, basically to short the terminals A, B, and then you find the short circuit uh, current through it. So let's look at the equivalent network. Again, we're going to look at the equivalent network because it is the intuitive approach. Let's see what can we do to the equivalent network, and if we know what's going on in the equivalent network, then we know why does it work on the original network. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to short the terminals A to B. It becomes short circuit. So we call the current flowing through this short circuit I short circuit, ISC, stands for I short circuit. Short circuit A to B, and then by doing that, we know that this current I short circuit in this simple circuit relates to Ohm's law. I short circuit is basically the same as the current going through this resistor, and the current going through this resistor R thevenin is basically uh, V thevenin over R thevenin. Or from Ohm's law, we can state that R thevenin will equal to V thevenin over I short circuit. But V thevenin is the same as the open circuit voltage that I measured in the previous step. So we can always say that R thevenin will equal to VOC to I short circuit. So if you have your network as the one shown here, and I say that find R thevenin, the first thing you do is you evaluate VOC, which we did in step one. And then now what you're going to do is you're going to short circuit A to B. Once you short circuit A to B, find this I short circuit using any technique you want. And once you solve for I short circuit, then R thevenin going to be VOC over I short circuit. The intuitive approach is applied here, but that's why it does work when we apply it to the big network. Now the second technique to find R thevenin is basically using something we call the test voltage test current method. So to find or to determine R thevenin, we can also use the test voltage test current method. So this basically says that you're going to apply V test and I test to the circuit at the output terminals, but you have to do two things. The first thing you have to do is you need to suppress all independent sources. When you suppress all independent sources, the voltage sources are short circuit. So we need to short all voltage sources, and then the current source is going to be open circuit. Now keep in mind those are independent voltage and current sources. The reason is, when you suppress the voltage source, the voltage source becomes zero, and zero volts is basically short circuit. When you suppress a current source, the current through the current source is zero, then the current source becomes open circuit. So make sure that you, when you suppress independent sources, short the voltage source, or all voltage sources, and open circuit all current sources. Then apply a test voltage across the load and measure the test current or vice versa. You can also apply a test current but measure the test voltage. So let me show you how is that done on the equivalent circuit. If this is our equivalent circuit and I wanted to find R thevenin and because this is the equivalent network I have a voltage source here. When we suppress this voltage source 
it becomes short circuit. So we're gonna short circuit the voltage source, and then we're gonna apply a test voltage. Usually the test voltage can be one volt, unless you wanna solve it symbolically. I don't recommend you to do that at the entry levels. Just apply one volt for V test. And then if you apply V test here, then we know in this particular circuit or this simple circuit, if we major I test, I test relates to R thevenin. So basically you can say that R thevenin using Ohm's law will equal to V test over I test. If I know if I apply one volt here and I solve for I test, I know what I test is, then I can say that R thevenin will equal to V test over I test. Right? This is basically Ohm's law. It's a simple circuit. Then the same thing can be applied to our network. So what we have to do in this particular network, for example, if we have this network, I'm gonna only short the independent voltage source. I have an independent voltage source here shorted. However, the dependent sources, they stay the same in the circuit. You don't touch those, you keep them in the circuit. Only the independent voltage sources are suppressed. If you have a voltage source here, short circuit, and then apply the V-test, which is one volt and solve for I-test. So if you apply the circuit, you solve for V-test and I-test, then you can find R thevenin, which is basically V-test and I-test. This is where we apply the V-test usually. So uh, this particular technique is powerful, especially if the circuit doesn't have any dependent sources. Because if you don't have dependent sources using this technique, then we can always say that R thevenin is R equivalent looking back. Let me show you how is that done. Again, if you start with the equivalent circuit, that's the intuitive answer. You have a voltage source here. If we short the voltage source, then uh, clearly that the R thevenin is basically R equivalent looking back. If we measure R equivalent looking back, it's gonna be R thevenin then we can do the same with a network. So if we have a network like this one, for example, and if you look into this particular network, which has this circuit, then here we don't have any dependent sources. We only have independent voltage source and we have independent current source. So to find R thevenin, the thevenin equivalent resistance in this particular example, you're gonna suppress the independent sources. So the voltage source becomes short circuit as shown here, and the current source becomes open circuit as shown here. Then this becomes very easy for us to find R thevenin. R thevenin for the circuit will be the equivalent resistance looking back. So if you look the equivalent resistance across the terminals A and B, it's gonna be those two resistors in series. So R7 in here is gonna be R1 plus R2. The test method that we have used here gave us this solution or gave us this conclusion that if you have a dependent free circuit, then R7 in is basically R equivalent looking back. Now this technique can be used in many applications in advanced electronics. I don't want you to ignore this V test when you have a dependent source. Uh, it can be used in advanced electronics later on when you learn electrical engineering. But for now, if you like, the short circuit method will work if you have a dependent sources. If you don't have dependent sources, just look for our equivalent looking back after you suppress all the voltage sources and the current sources. And this is basically the easiest technique to have. Uh, we came to the conclusion of the first video. I hope you enjoyed this video. and. I highly recommend you to also watch those subsequent videos that I will have to solve specific examples and how to uh, evaluate the Thevenin equivalent network and then also to show you how to use ORCAD BSPICE uh, to simulate the Thevenin equivalent network and see how it works.